Hi everyone, let's go over my bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Starting with the first bullish scenario where we're looking for an impulse to the upside, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, where the most common target for your wave 4 is between the 236 and the 0 0.5 Fibonacci, taken from the low of 2 to the high of wave 3. This gives you a target between 63k and 60.7k. Inside this area, we do have an interesting area of support, which is the 6-hour gap top. If we go to the 6-hour time frame, then you can see that price over here moved towards the upside, created a red candle and then continued. Now, below this red candle, we have a little bit of a gap between the wick of the candle before and the wick of the red candle. And a gap, especially in a trending environment, can act as very, very interesting support. So that is something that I'll surely be keeping an eye on. The invalidation for this scenario is price moving to the downside, touching the 0 0.618 at 59.7k. The first area of support on the chart that you can see is here between 64.4k and 64.7k. Losing this area of support increases the probabilities for a flat structure in wave 4, a three-wave corrective structure in a wave A, B, C, a three-wave zigzag family structure in a wave A, a corrective zigzag family structure in a wave B, and then an impulse to the downside in a wave C. The most common target area for a wave B in an expanding flat is between the 1.236 and the 1.38 Fibonacci taken from the start to the end of wave A. A, which as you can see is nicely respected. We are then now looking for a 5-wave impulsive structure to the downside in C to take at least the low of your wave A, but as you can see we do have a bigger target area still to the downside with the 0 0.5 at 60.7k being the maximum target. Another bullish scenario is that your wave 3 is not yet finished. So in this scenario, we then have again 1, 2, but then we look for a higher wave 3, corrective 4, and a move up in wave 5, where the target area for your wave 4 is a little bit higher, 64.4k to 61.7k, as I now took it from the low of 2 to the high of the box over here, this blue box. And the reason that a blue box is interesting is because of the daily time frame because on the daily time frame if we pull a volume profile from the start of this range to where we are now you can see that we are very close to the point of control of this range which is very important resistance towards the upside so in this scenario we could then hit a wave three wave five at the point of control reject in a wave four so at least keep your eye open to this resistance level whatever the scenario is because it is impressive resistance between 66.6k and 67.1k the bearish scenario on the one hour time frame is an A, B and then a wave C towards the upside. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 leading diagonal A, 3 wave B, impulse to the upside in a wave C. The most common target for your wave C is between the 1 and the 1.618 trend-based sub-extension taken from the low of A to the high of A to the low of B and you can see that is where we are right now. However, the 1.618 starts to add probabilities to more bullish scenarios as the 1.618 is a little less common for a wave C compared to a wave 3. So that's something we do have to keep in mind. Preferably in this wave C we finish wave 5 with at least a one more high because at the moment here on the lower time frame even though one might think okay we can count a five wave structure to the upside here it's actually not a correct impulsive structure to the upside in a wave one two three four five you have overlap between a wave one and four which invalidates an impulse to the upside so then you have to start thinking about a diagonal or a double one two now a double one two here one two one two three four five four five is now also invalidated because of the overlap leaving you with a, a diagonal structure where you then have a wave one, two, three, four, and a wave five. However, 
in a diagonal structure, your way wave four has to be a zigzag structure where it is very rare for your wave C and then an ABC to not take the low of wave A. So it doesn't give higher probabilities to a diagonal and therefore the probabilities would be higher that this is corrective as long as price is not at least making one more high. And then also again, we have impressive resistance here with the point of control. So that's an interesting uh, target. Now the CVD divergences on the chart, all of them have played out. Bullish CVD divergences, target was this high. Local here, bullish CVDs during the uptrend, target was this high. And bearish CVD divergences inside the target area for a potential flat, always interesting, also played out because we took this low. We also have some news today. We have news later at 2.30 p.m. Central European time. So make sure that you trade safe around that hour because it might increase the volatility on the chart. And if we then finally look at the probabilities that on the one hour time frame, the probabilities are higher for an impulsive structure compared to the bearish ABC. Looking currently for wave force to form, right? So bigger sideways ranges. And please be careful during wave force because the most moment you go into 4-5 territory, price action might be very tricky and very complex. If you make profit during the move towards the upside, you don't want to lose everything in the bigger ranges that are going to form when you start a wave 5. So be very patient, have a very clear plan and a clear strategy, know your areas of interest and then of course trade your areas of interest. Be also mindful of the point of control right above us in this target area over here, the target box between 66.8k and 67.1k. I hope that this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the brand new complete Elliott Waves guide playlist I've made that shows you all you need to know about Elliott Waves. Thanks for watching and subscribing and I'd like to see you at the next one. Bye bye.